Hello students, welcome to Ganviar School of Education, Suresh Ganviar University. I'm Dr. Sonia Kaur Bansal and today we will be discussing about the topic emotional intelligence. So in the subject psychology of teaching and learning. So let's start learning about emotional intelligence and my learning objective of today's class is to enable your students about uh, the understanding of emotional intelligence as what are the emotions and how the emotional intelligence is very much helpful and is very important in developing the wholesome personality of the children. All right, so let's start learning students. First of all, uh, let me clear my learning objectives will cover the following content that is uh, shown on your screen. And you will all be able to learn about what is emotional intelligence. And in that you will be able to learn about self awareness, managing emotions, motivation, empathy, handling relationship. So this is how uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, the emotional intelligence. So uh, uh, as well as you will be able to learn about how to develop a higher sense of emotional intelligence among the children. Then you will be also able to differentiate among uh, the two com between the two concepts IQ and EQ and the components of uh, emotional quotient and characteristics of emotional uh, intelligent people. And then uh, I will be also telling you how to increase your EQ, that is emotional question. So importance and implementation we will be discussing. So first of all, we need to know that you need to work on your emotional intelligence also. Most of the people actually do not think that this is really very important in their life as well as in their children's life. But changing scenario has enabled us to think over this uh, concept also as to develop, as to uh, think over this emotional intelligence term. All right. Now, first of all, uh, let's understand what is emotional intelligence. So students, uh, the, this is one uh, diagram given to you with pictures that emotional intelligence is uh, everywhere. You cannot uh, separate it from you. So either you are a uh, as a student or as a leader or as you are working in a healthcare or an organization anywhere emotional intelligence is must to understand all right so let's understand what is emotional intelligence so it is uh, a person's ability to understand their own emotions the emotions of others as well and to act appropriately using these emotions See, students, the word emotion has been derived from the Latin word immover, and that means stir up. So stir up the emotions within us. All right. So I hope you are understanding that uh, a person ha has full uh, many emotions. According to the situation, we get angry, we get happy, we get joyous, we get excited, we feel competitive, we feel jealous. So these are all the emotions that we are understanding within us. But are we understanding our own emotions only or are we understanding others emotions also? So here we are talking about emotional intelligence and it is leading to the understanding of emotions of others as well. And to act appropriately using these emotions in a very refined way, in a filtered way. All right. So in a controlled way as well. So emotional intelligence never stops growing because we are always evolving as people. So EQ is something that must be nurtured among all the human beings. And we all know that human being is a social being. And if we want to maintain the social relation, we have to actually uh, nurture our emotions also. We cannot suppress them. If we are suppressing them, it would be really on the contrast of uh, normal uh, nature of the human being. Okay, students. So self-awareness is very important if we want to nurture the emotions. So what matters most is how you see yourself. That's very important. 
you can see a picture here and the cat is looking at the mirror and the cat is feeling that I am the tigress or maybe the tiger. So uh, this is how we see ourselves. That's really very important. So self-awareness is something that is leading to the maturity of emotions. So recognize your internal feelings, what you want and how you want the particular things. So recognizing how someone is feeling without them having to say anything. So using your gut feeling to guide decisions also. So this is called self-awareness and it is leading to your emotional maturity as well. Now, secondly, uh, we talk about managing emotions. Managing or controlling emotions is very important for everyone. So finding ways to handle emotions that are appropriate to the situations. In a happy situation, we cannot cry. Maybe due, we are crying due to happiness, overwhelming of emotions. But definitely, we cannot cry uh, due to the sad feeling. So, there is a ruler for managing emotion. And ruler is an abbreviation of a few terms. Like R stands for recognizing. U stands for understanding. L stands for labeling. E stands for expressing, then R stands for regulating. So these are the emotions, students, which actually can be controlled. And by applying these technical terms, and uh, you can manage your emotions very well. First of all, you recognize how to behave in a particular situation, which emotion to come out. Then understand the situation, then labeling it, then express the proper behavior, then regulating. Now see the cartoon given to you. Would you excuse me a moment? Someone is trying to get my attention. And if the attention is not got how you are getting angry, that's really inappropriate. Because recognizing the situation is failed and then understanding the situation is failed and express labeling, expressing and regulating that emotion is also failed. So this is how we really need from children also to express their emotion in a very appropriate way according to the situation and in a very controlled and balanced way. Okay, students? So this is how we can manage the emotions. Now, next thing is uh, motivation. So using self-control to channel emotions towards a goal, that's really very important. And when we talk about it, we definitely think of uh, using uh, self-control in many situations. So every time you will not be with your children and nobody is going to be with you all the time. So you have to to internalize, internally motivate yourself to control and channelize the emotions and uh, towards a goal. That means if you want to achieve something, your emotion should lead to that way. But if you uh, are actually externally motivated and you are not able to still understand the concept behind your goal, then it would be rather difficult to pursue that continuously. Clear? So, this motivation is really very helpful. Now, next is empathy. So, understanding these emotions. Are, empathy is also very important. So, empathy is something that understanding the emotional perspective of other people. Nowadays, this is really very uh, important uh, thing that we are not understanding each other and the consequences are uh, rather very uh, dangerous that people are themselves feeling alone and complaining that nobody is understanding them. So rather we are also involved in that, that uh, um, we are also not understanding anyone. So empathy is something that making you feel or making you just uh, comfortable with others emotions also. So try to understand the emotional perspectives of other people around you and then you will see a very good change. How the relations are strong, full of love, affection and care. 
So empathy is really much required in uh, relationships also. Now handling relationship using personal information and information about others. To handle social relationship and to develop interpersonal skills. It's really very interesting that people are handling relationship by sharing the personal information. So it is actually handling the social relationship as well. And when you are handling the personal and social relationship, that means sure that you are going to develop your interpersonal skills also, which will definitely help you in getting professional development. Now, studies show that those individuals with a high sense of emotional intelligence tend to succeed and excel in different areas of life. So, Different areas, overall performance, general health, quality of life, relationship quality, personal effectiveness. So this is all dependent on emotional intelligence, how you deal with people around you, how you deal with people who are at working place or at social uh, gathering and how you personally uh, treat yourself. So isn't it very interesting that only one thing, emotional intelligence is affecting your overall personality in all perspectives. Clear students? Now I hope you are understanding and let's understand further. So let's understand how to develop a higher sense of emotional intelligence. So it's really very interesting uh, for a prospective teacher also and as well as for learner also that he should she should learn to develop a higher sense of emotional intelligence and for first of all become emotionally literate label your feelings what do you feel at certain situation rather than labeling people or situation say i feel instead of i know so don't uh, label other people that people that the person is always like that. So this is somehow will uh, disturb the whole uh, relationships, bondings uh, within you and with uh, other people also. So try to become emotionally literate and label your own feelings. What do you feel in certain situations? All right. Now, secondly, uh, I told you that start saying I feel instead of saying I know. That's really very interesting. Then uh, distinguish between thoughts and feelings. People generally uh, take these two words in synonyms forms, but they are not. Thoughts are something which are going on continuously in our mind, but feelings is something that we that is affecting our affective part. And we are sensitive towards that. So that uh, differentiation must be very clear. Take more responsibility for your feelings. What do you feel? Don't blame others that they made you feel like this. That's you who is uh, responsible about, about your happiness as well as sadness. So use your feeling to help make decisions. Your decisions should be according to your feelings. What do you strongly feel? Use feelings to set and achieve goals. So in that situation, you will be developing a higher sense for emotional intelligence if you are actually telling your uh, self that this is good and this is bad and this is how I feel in a particular situation. Then you can feel energized, not angry. Maybe there are some situations in which the person do not feel happy and they are rather uh, restless, but try to become energized, more full of energy, not angry. Then validate other people's feelings also. What do others say? What's their point of view? Try to understand them. Just making your own uh, judgments without assessing the whole situation would not be appropriate. So validate and others' feelings and just uh, increase your sense of emotional intelligence. <coughs> then uh, next you can use feelings to help show respect for others also. This is a wonderful feeling of uh, respecting others that uh, in return, everyone will get the love, affection and respect as well. 
and the important thing if you want to get higher sense of emotional uh, maturity intelligence so don't advise anyone until it is asked don't command don't control don't criticize and don't judge or le lecture to others so avoid people who invalidate you who don't consider your worth just avoid them all right so this is how emo emotional intelligence will be more and more strong within you now let's understand the difference between iq versus eq iq is intelligent quotient and eq is emotional quotient so iq is thinking part rather eq is feeling part so the head the heart the thing is like that the diagram is given to you the personality is actually like this the head the heart okay now how iq differs so iq means it's a measure of an individual's personal information bank memory vocabulary and visual motor skills iq is set and peaks at the age of 70 remains constant through adulthood so it's an it's a measurement of individual's personal information blank that how the person is feeling about a certain situation but eq is something different not fixed can be improved throughout life eq is something uh, really different from iq so iq established by mid teens also can't increase predicts only 10 to 20 percent of life success now see 90 percent of the success of outstanding leaders is attributable to emotional intelligence which is twice as important than intellectual intelligence now let's understand the components of emotional quotient students these are interpersonal in interpersonal adaptability stress management and general mood so first of all intrapersonal is related to self-regard emotional self-awareness intrapersonal that is personal feeling for himself or herself so how it is emotional quotient will be built up if you are regarding yourself your emotional self-awareness is more important you know in which situation what do you feel the independence of the person is very important self-actualization of the things is very important and it is leading to the higher order thinking skills as well then interpersonal which is leading you to maintain the relationship with other people other people's emotional perspectives as well so in this we include the attributes like empathy social uh, responsibility interpersonal relationship so these are all the component of the which are building up the emotional quotient now next is adaptability so adaptability is something that real reality testing how you adjust with the real situations are you flexible enough or you are very rigid so this will uh, actually enhance your emotional quotient problem solving stress management stress tolerance impulse control general mood optimism happiness these are also very important component of emotional quotient now emotional intelligence chart let's have a look on that it's beautiful what i observe what i do so personal competence and social competence are both are discussed here and in personal competence what i observe is my self-awareness and what i do is my self-management and but when i'm talking about social competence so social competence where well, what i observe is related to social awareness but when i say what i do so it is related with uh, relationship management all right students so this is how emotional intelligence chart is related to the personal plus social competence both and it is dealing with what i observe and what i do that depends on your feelings not exactly on thoughts now students let's uh, have a look on emotional intelligence map 25 competencies are divided into five dimensions so these five dimensions are self-awareness self-management 
motivation, empathy, social skills. So these are the five dimensions. And in these five dimensions, you are going to have 25 competencies, which is drawing your emotional intelligence map. So first of all, let's understand about self-awareness. Self-awareness means knowing about us, our own self. Emo and it is leading with three competencies. Three competencies are emotional awareness, accurate self-assessment, self-confidence. So these three competencies are leading to a person towards self-awareness. Person must be actually very much competent enough to know about his her own emotions what i do feel in a particular situation that's my emotional awareness when i did wrong when i did right that's my accurate self assessment do i do the things in a proper way that's requiring self-confidence. So self-awareness is really important in which the person is telling you, person is showing his behavior confidently. Next is self-management. So self-control is really very important. Uh, if you are not getting influenced easily by another factors, then it means your self-control is very important. It is leading uh, with five competencies, self-control, trustworthiness, consentiousness, adaptability, and innovation. So these are actually five competencies which are kept in this category uh, of self-management. How the person manages himself, how the things go on a uh, very uh, ni nice way by controlling himself, by creating trust among the people around him or her. Consentiousness is leading towards something that is feeling uh, the great feeling from your inside. And you are adaptable to the new situation, awkward situation which may come in your life. So innovations are also there. You are not actually uh, just running behind the traditional ways, but you are also putting up your own thoughts in that way. So this is how innovation is also important. Now next, and let's, let's understand the next dimension that is motivation and it's really very important. Motivation is something, it's a force which is leading you to do a particular kind of work. And we all know motivation can be of external and internal type. And there are five competencies in this emotion which are actually included in emotional intelligence map. So achievement drive, Commitment, initiative, optimism. These are emotional intelligence drives which are included in this dimension of motivation. How much you are motivated will um, decide your commitment level, initiative level, optimism level and achievement drive. And if you are highly motivated, definitely these competencies will be brushed up and will be actually more and more in a fruitful case. But on the contrary if the motivation is low then these all competencies will not be developed at all now let's have a look on the five, fifth or fourth fourth and fifth dimension fourth is empathy and empathy is leading to uh, five competencies like understanding others developing others not only you are thinking about developing your own personality but also you are thinking about developing others personality as well Leveraging diversity, political awareness, these are also included in empathy. Now, fifth dimension is related to social skills, which is really very important. And this is also having to, uh, different competencies, which are uh, including in emotional intelligence map. And it is influence, influence of personalities, influence of uh, some social personalities, communication, conflict management leadership qualities, change catalyst, building bonds, collaboration and cooperation, team capabilities. These are all the competencies which must be acquired if we want to get the emotional intelligence. All right, students, I hope you are understanding. I hope you have understood these five, five dimensions, which are um, including the fifth 25 competencies. 
self awareness self management motivation empathy and social skills so let's understand so self awareness that intrapersonal skills ability to understand and apply personal emotional now it is including self regard emotional self awareness assertiveness is very important independence and self actualization then self management it is leading to uh, towards interpersonal skills like people skills and stress management of course stress tolerance and impulse control these are all the important competencies which is actually leading you towards self management you must be uh, must not be impulsive in the situation you must be very control behavior social awareness so interpersonal skills people skills empathy social responsibility social management interpersonal relationship are also their ability to establish and maintain mutually beneficial relationship noted for their intimacy so adaptability reality testing flexibility problem solving are all included in social management which are in enhancing the social um, interpersonal relationship now see students how the structure of emotional competency is given so it is including personal competence emotional competence and social competence so emotional competence we are mainly discussing here and it is leading towards self awareness self management self awareness relationship management so again in self awareness we have studied about emotional self awareness accurate self assessment self confidence and in self management emotional self control transparency must be there to express your emotions adaptability achievement orientation initiative optimism then social awareness empathy organizational awareness must be there then service orientation then relationship management re developing others feelings also inspirational leadership change catalyst influence conflict management teamwork and collaboration so these are all uh, actually considered in the emotional competence era now students let's understand about the characteristics of emotional intelligent people why do we say that some people are really very intelligent and others are not what are those characteristics so let's understand in a very brief way first of all knowing one's feelings so if you have someone around you that whom you consider that the person is really very uh, intelligent then you must be definitely looking at the characteristics that the person is always knowing one's feelings what do we understand about it so that the person is actually happy to understand about it so then second thing managing emotions and feeling appropriately is seen in these type of people and these people are able to motivate themselves they are not like that they uh, they will be motivated only if someone is going to motivate them they have their own self uh, kind of motivation and it is actually leading them towards a good goal so this is how the characteristics of go emotional intelligent people are including more about it that uh, they are uh, having the ability to persist in face of frustrations whenever they are uh, there are some phases in the life that there are there are uh, so many frustrations and stress in the life they are able to control them ability to control impulses and delay gratification also ability to empathize empathize with others capacity to hope social competencies then how to increase your eq conduct a personal inventory analyze the setting and identify skills needed enlist trusted friends focus on a few competencies practice 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 be observant and reflective don't expect immediate results 
this will definitely increase your eq and don't uh, expect like uh, whatever you are uh, doing you will get immediate results so learn from your mistakes acknowledge your successes now eq value let's understand about it it is leading towards the components like creativity stress management decision making relationship building can be enhanced so what else is important to you so these are the things which actually leading towards eq value now developing eq uh, four quadrants model is given to you so it is about self and others so first it is um, given in the category awareness and then second action so quadrant one is dealing with emotional self awareness who am i and what are my potential areas of development then quadrant three is dealing with social awareness how can i transcend my perspective so that i can understand the value of others then second part is dealing with actions and it is dealing with self quadrant two emotional self control how can i self regulate my actions or emotions so i can be right and effective and quadrant 4 is dealing with social skills how do i build teams and create constructive work relationship so eq in action group exercise from group of four each member select a question like i'm impatient with people who are different from me and it is about social awareness secondly i can express my negative feelings without offending others that is leading towards emotional self control and then thirdly it is hard for me to ask for what i want that is leading to the component eq action emotional self expression then uh, fourthly i like it when others recognize that i have won the argument so it is leading with social skills so your question is related to which of the four dimensions you can get very good idea of that how would you answer the question very true true not true not at all true of you so this is how it will decide your eq in action so 90% of the success of outstanding leaders in attributable to emotional intelligence which is twice as important than intellectual intelligence so what is the importance the winds and the waves are always on the side of the best navigators who are having best emotional intelligence this is given by vincent van gogh so why is eq so important so let's understand that over past two decades children have become more depressed and lonely they have many complaints with them they have become impulsive and disobedient not obeying the parents teachers they have become nervous and prone to worry on the small things and imitable prone to eating disorders what are some possible causes for that and it may be leading to parents have less free time with their children like less relatives in children's life these days both parents often work and they are busy in their own schedule there is more tv watching and computer games so these are actually the reasons probably behind being being they are just depressive and lonely and for becoming uh, impulsive disobedient nervous prone to worry and imitable prone to eating disorders now eq scores help predict es help discriminate between prisoners and the local normative sample successful and unsuccessful alcohol treatment in, uh, participants so therapist and their clients academic dropout these are all really going to help the eq scores okay? they are really predicting aggression in the workplace suicide attempts ability to recover from mental illness now let's have a look on the implementation don't forget that little emotions are the great cap captains of our lives vincent van gogh has said rightly about it 
So how we are going to implement it? Now see the characteristics of a low IEQ person and the characteristics of a high EQ person. Or are you on the happy side? So just check it yourself. First of all, I'm going to tell you about are you on this side, unhappy side or happy side. So low EQ. I, if you keep on saying such sentences like, if only I had a different job. If only I had finished graduation. If only I had been handsome, beautiful. If only my spouse had sp stopped drinking. If only I had been born rich and famous. You can see the sentences that I will be happy. If only if I had good contacts. Or you, if you keep on saying if I will be happy. I will be, uh, if only I had better friends. If only I had married someone else. So these are the characteristics of low EQ person. That person is never happy. Person is always complaining. Person is not satisfied what he or she is having. Now, on the contrary, let's have a look on the characteristics of a high EQ person as well. And a time to be aggressive and a time to be passive. This type of person actually do not show aggressiveness and passiveness uh, according to their mood, but they have certain times for them. A time to wait and time to for watch. A time to be together and a time to be alone. A time to fight and time to love. A time to work and a time to play. A time to cry and time to life, laugh. A time to confront and a time to withdraw as well. A time to speak and a time to be silent. A time to be patient and time to decide as well. So these are the characteristics of EQ, high EQ person. And definitely these type of person are on the happier side of the life. All right, students, so you have seen the characteristics of high and low EQ person. And I really hope you are going to judge yourself on the basis of th these characteristics. So analyze yourself. Don't worry if you are a person with low EQ. We have a solution for you. Yes, if you find that you are somehow uh, relating yourself to the low EQ, which the categories, characteristics I have told you just now, then don't worry. Then uh, I'm providing solutions to you. So top nine suggestions for developing your emotional intelligence. First of all, become emotionally literate. Label your feelings rather than labeling people or situations. This thing is not right. That's why my things are becoming bad. That person is not right. Don't label others. Label yourself, your feelings. How do you feel about a particular situation, person, thing? That will actually really uh, make you emotionally literate. Then you must distinguish between thoughts and feelings. Don't advise, command, control, criticize, judge or lecture to others if it is not required. Take more responsibility of your feelings. Whatever you do, to just make it sure that you are fully responsible for it. So take more responsibility of your feelings. Use your feelings to help make decisions as well. And use feelings to set and achieve goals. Feel energized, not angry. Use feelings to help show respect for others as well. Validate other people's feelings. Avoid people who invalidate you. So these are the top nine suggestions, children, um, that will really develop, develop your emotional intelligence. Now, in conclusion, we can say that emotional intelligence is therefore an ability to understand the need and feelings of oneself as well as of other people. So you have to manage your own feelings plus you have to respond in a very proper way when it is required from you. You cannot escape children. So this is how that uh, we actually consider that because when emotions run very high, people do and say things they normally would not. So when you are a young child, this is what you do all the time. 
so emotional self regulation a large component of emotional intelligence is the ability to manage one's experience and expressions of emotions with practice children improve their capacity for emotional self regulation and by age of 4 uh, or 5 most children start to use strategies as well to eliminate disturbing external stimuli and to regulate them so in other words they cover their eyes when they are scared like plug their ears when they hear a loud noise so this is how they regulating themselves they are the, just escaping them so it's not until age 10 that children consistently use more complex strategies they create their own strategies for emotional self regulation so these strategies can be broken down into simplistic cast categories uh, like those who that attempt to solve the problem and those they attempt to tolerate the emotion so just understand students that feelings serve a purpose the first piece of emotional intelligence is awareness and understanding of emotions and we have to understand and accept before we can control and express our emotions so emotions are not uh, an inconvenience but rather a piece of human um, evolution that serves a purpose the discrete theory of emotions suggests that each of the primary emotions have evolved to serve distinct purposes and motivate our behavior so like sadness is an emotion uniquely capable of uh, slowing us down in doing all the activities both in thought and motor activity this can allow us the opportunity to reflect on the source of our emotional upset and take a closer look at the antecedents of it and in contrast anger speeds us up mobilizing intense energy and sending blood to our extremities while evolutionary this geared up for Uh, a fight in modern times it allows the sustained energy for a fight of a different nature so anger is doing different thing and sadness is doing different thing anger cues us that our rights have been violated and helps us mobilize to protect against future threats so our emotions are to be respected and reflected upon so this includes the ch children's intense emotion at seemingly non intense situations so this is how you uh, can understand about your own emotional iq and it is really very important to increase the child's emotional intelligence in your uh, classroom or in your at your home so because emotional intelligence appears to such a strong predictor of success and researchers have also looked at how caregivers can encourage its development so specifically it is observed that how parents respond to their children's emotions in an effort to understand how emotional intelligence develops so it is found that parents respond to children's emotions one of four possible ways like first is dismissing parents they see children's emotions as unimportant and attempt to eliminate them quickly often through the use of distraction so this is really very inappropriate so the second is disapproving parents they always see negative emotions as something to be squashed usually through punishment then thirdly we talk about laissez faire parents who accept all emotions from child but fail to help the child solve solving their problems but put limits also on appropriate behavior and fourth type of parents we can call emotion coaching parents well they value negative emotions and not impatient with child's expression of them and use emotional experience as an opportunity for bonding by offering guidance through labeling emotions and problem solving issues at hand so this is how uh, students it's really very important to uh, control or nurture or to develop the emotional iq among the students
now students let's discuss about some mcqs which i have given to you so which of the following is true regarding the meaning of the word angst so the word carries the option a is related to the word carries the same meaning in both the english and german languages uh, to english speakers angst means the extreme state of anxiety experienced because of social isolation and loneliness c to german speakers angst is equivalent to the term dread and d is to german speakers angst is the state of being with no known known causes and this is the right answer secondly the german speakers are having difficulty difficulty keeping it together they would use which of the following words to describe this experience so it is fear anxiety angst or sadness they would use it angst now tell me students which of the following individuals connects to the term emotional intelligence goldman weschler sternberg or ekman so the correct answer is goldman question 4 is related to risky uh, ricky is assess as having high emotional intelligence this means he has uh, skills and abilities that help him understand people from another culture or heritage skills and abilities that help him process understand and regulate his emotions and those of others skills that help them problem solve skills and abilities that help them to acquire knowledge and the correct answer is option b which of the following is not a skill associated with emotional intelligence a experiencing love b negotiating conflict c being sensitive to others d expressing pride and anger so the correct answer is expressing pride and anger now the question uh, is uh, emotions are option a is objective responses to experiences in our environment subjective responses to experiences in our environment physiological changes in uh, to experiences in our environment or the behavioral changes to experiences in our environment and the correct answer is subjective responses to experience in our environment so these are some references students for your most study purpose and i really believe that you are going to study more about emotional intelligence to clarify the concept in a beautiful way all right students so i hope that you have understand uh, the concept of emotional intelligence what it is and how emotional intelligence is very useful for a teacher as well as learner all right students so we here we have come to the end of the class uh, so see you in the next class students and till then stay safe stay happy and keep learning thank you students